What's going on you guys? Today we're going to be going over the top five surf fishing myths that I'm sure you've heard or at least have encountered and why they're just not true and how it's probably affecting your surf fishing trips. All right, so our number one, I think a very common misconception that a lot of people have is you have to have big hooks to catch big fish. That's just not true. I see a lot of people going out to the surf with a, a giant hook just like this and they're trying to catch fish and they're just, they're not going to be able to. I mean, I've caught a trophy redfish on just that little, little tiny hook. See that? So that's the difference between a seven odd hook and a one odd hook. You don't need giant massive hooks to catch fish from the surf. See that? So with a big hook, yeah, you can put a big piece of bait on it, but again, big bait doesn't equal big fish. So little hook, just like that little one odd hook, that's all you really need. You're gonna be able to hook a really nice shark, a really nice redfish, um, it, it, trout, all kinds of stuff. So don't be going out and buying the biggest hooks you can find. You're just, you're not gonna have any luck. All right, so that number two is gonna be, you have to have a super, super heavy main line to go out catching fish. And I made this mistake when I first started surf fishing too. I had 80, 100, 120 pound braid on my lines and that was just insane. Nowadays, I use 20 pound mono. Um, you, you know, not, nothing special, just H2O Express brand. 20 pound mono, that's what I use in all my um, reels. And honestly, some people would argue that's a little heavy. A lot of people I know use 15 pound mono to go out. And then they'll have a leader that's either braid or mono. Um, some of my braided, uh, or some of my reels have 40 pound braid on it, or 40 pound mono for the leader. And some of them have, you know, 60 pound braid, depending on what I am and what I'm doing with it. But you don't have to have super, super heavy line. When you have super, super heavy line, especially a super heavy mono, like 60, 70, 80 pound mono, you're not gonna be able to cast that very far. You're not gonna be able to cast it as easily. It's not gonna be as sensitive. You're gonna miss bites. You're gonna miss fish, all kinds of stuff. As long as you set your drag accordingly, 20, even 15 pound mono, perfect. All you need. Coming in at number three is gonna be the further you cast, the bigger fish you're gonna catch. Everyone, I see this all the time whenever I go out fishing. People will wade out as far as they possibly can and they'll cast it as far as they possibly can to try to get their bait 300 yards off the beach to catch that massive fish that they want and they're just not gonna catch it. It's as simple as that, they're, they're just not, they're not gonna catch it. Unless you're going shark fishing, at which point you should be kayaking baits out, you don't really need to do that. I've caught, I mean, like I said, I've caught trophy redfish. The, the trophy redfish that I caught off Falano Beach, that was within 15 yards of the beach. I've caught four foot sharks 10 feet off the beach. I've caught sharks, redfish, trout, whiting, pompano. I've caught everything within 20 yards of the beach. You don't have to cast it super, super far. Cast it right at your feet. Should be fine. As long as you're in a trough, you're good. At number four is something that I hear a lot, and I still hear this with my friends and anglers to this day, which is you have to fish certain tides. Either you have to fish, you know, the top of the high tide or the bottom of the low tide or the incoming tide or the down, you know, the outgoing tide. You, you don't have to do that. I have caught fish, all kinds of fish at the bottom, you know, slack tide when the water wasn't moving to the incoming tide, to the top of the you know high tide, to the outgoing tide, to back to slack. It, it doesn't really, really matter. Certain species are susceptible to it, are more likely to be caught at certain tides, but overall, you should be fine. Just go out there, throw a line in the water, you'll catch something. And coming in at number five, finally, is you can't use artificial bait in the surf. I hear this a lot, and I think it's a pretty common misconception that you have to use natural bait in the surf, meaning cut mullet or shrimp, squid, fresh cut bait, you know, different kind of fish, something like that. While those baits are good, and a lot of people would argue, and I would argue that they are better than artificial bait, you can still use artificial bait in the surf. You can go throw out fish bites or fish gum. You can throw out art artificial lures. You can throw out artificial crabs. I've done that before. I've got a whole video on that where I use nothing but artificial baits in the surf, and I caught fish that day. I've caught plenty of fish that day. I I I've hooked tarpon on fish bites before. Like, you don't have to use natural baits. If you you don't want to deal with it. You don't want to deal with the mess, the stink, the cutting, the blood, the guts, nothing like that. You just want to go out and you want to go fishing. Go get yourself a bag of fish bites or fish gum. Go get yourself some artificial baits, you know, from Dick's Sporting Goods, Walmart Academy, Bass Pro Shop, Cabela's, anything you want to do and go throw a line in the water. All right, hopefully this video was helpful and you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to click that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that you guys get updates whenever I upload. I upload a short every day and I upload every week, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Till next time, see you guys out there.